Hey everybody, welcome to another model building workshop. I'm Mr. Allen, coming from Providence, Rhode Island, part of the Community Libraries of Providence, the Smith Hill location. And today we're going to be talking about Valentine tanks. And this here is the maquette kit of the British Infantry Tank Mark III Valentine 11. Now this kit actually does a couple of different versions. It does the, the 11 and it does a 10. So this is the old uh, maquette kit. I don't know if this one's got a date on it. I know I have another one that's got a date of 1996. Let's see a date on the box. This one gives you markings here. Let's see what it says. Well, it's in Russian. Let me find the. Oh, there it is. <laughs> it's the uh, Royal Artillery Corps, Anti Tank Regiment of the 30 Corps, Second Army in Germany in 1945. There's that option, which is what's on the cover here. And there's also two versions for the Valentine 10. And both of those are Red Army vehicles, one from, uh, well, <laughs> Ukraine in 1944 and the other from R Romania in 1944. So let me give you a look at those marking options there. Now for a while Marquette was like the only company that was making Valentine tank model kits. Uh, but now we've got some other people in the game. We've got uh, Tamio, which has a new one out, which has gathered a superb kit. And AFE Club's also got a uh, version of the Valentine too. Um, so these are the maquette kits that go back a little, a little bit in time. And these are uh, Eastern European companies. I'm not sure if they're, where are they from? I'm assuming it's from Russia. Yes, this is made in Russia. So there are some things that are a bit different with the, uh, with the maquette kit as opposed to like Tamiya and AFV Club and others that are out there now, Dragon, etc. So these kits tend to be a little bit more work. And here is the Type 11 that I've got here, which I think was a pretty fun kit to work on. It's in the Royal Army. Still working on this, so the top is it's mostly done. It's got a few other touch-ups I want to do. I want to get a crew. But there are some things about this that are a little bit challenging for for novice model builders. This is a it's a I wouldn't say crude, but it is a tougher type of kit to build versus some of the other uh, companies out there. This is an old Russian kit. So I found that the tracks and the suspension a little tough so I had to add a little bit here so this is going to be going over some rough ground in a diorama because I just couldn't get that lined up well I mean it took a lot of sanding a lot of work to get the suspension correct and that's Lincoln link by link treads you got there although I tend to like link by link but and these weren't terrible but they were some work to do one thing I really like about the Valentine tanks is there's just so much detail and such an interesting surface on these vehicles. So it's fun to paint in detail when you have all of these things going on there. Tools, radiator grills, all sorts of things, <laughs> for lack of a better term, all over the place. Lots of things to work on that you can really pick out details with a paintbrush. So that's the Type 11. And the Type 11, let's see. All right, the, the Type 11 had the 17-pounder uh, cannon in there. And the Type 10 had a 6-pounder. So I think that is equivalent to a six pounder. I think it's a fifty-seven millimeter gun, I believe. That that's a six, and the uh, the seventeen is I think more like a seventy. 
six millimeter, I believe. Anyway, uh, so it gives you a couple of options there, and then you can see, I'll give you an example of what the assembly steps look like for the maquette kits. And it gives you the choice of cannon for the two different variants. I thought that was a fun kit. It looks kind of neat. And they also made the earlier version. Actually, I'm going to double check on this one. Yeah, this is the Valentine 4. Yeah, this is what you can see. That's what the, uh, <laughs> the kit box looked like back in the day. Uh, and you can still get a hold of these things at a pretty good price on uh, eBay. Like this one here was going for about $22. Maybe about $9 in shipping. So, mm -hmm. anyway. So, they're still around. So, this is the Type 4 here. In the typical desert scheme. Added a crew member to it. So this one has the two pounder gun, which is like a 40 millimeter cannon. So in the early war, the British tanks, they had, you know, light tanks, they had cruiser tanks, and then they had infantry tanks. And these were designed pretty much to follow infantry into battle. And they were slow vehicles meant to kind of move at the pace of marching infantry and to help take on obstacles and whatever they would run, in, run into to support the infantry on the move. So one of the dilemmas they had in the early part of the war, like after the Dunkirk evacuation where everything, well, um, they had to leave all of the heavy equipment behind in France when they evacuated to England from Dunkirk. And they basically left all of their tanks and everything behind. They had a few left in England, but not much. So production had to be ramped up quickly. They had to make new tanks because they lost them all and they needed to get going right away. So one of the decisions they made, for better or for worse, was they had the, the two-pounded gun already being assembled and stockpiled. They were making plenty of these cannons. And they decided that for, for the time being that the tanks are going to need to be equipped with that gun because it would take too long to switch over all the production to better cannon at that time because they just needed to get stuff in the field immediately. So they already knew the drawbacks to the two-pounder gun, which is like a 40 millimeter, and I believe it only fired armor-piercing rounds. It didn't have like uh, high explosive rounds, so it was limited. But due to the crisis they were in, they just had to go with what they had. And that's what you see here. So these soldiered on with these, uh, well, not the strongest guns in the world, but they pressed on with these anyway because of the situation. So as you can see, this is in the desert version. And these were around like 1941, 42. And about 8,000 variants of the Valentine were produced. So believe it made it the most produced British tank of the war and they were phased out mm, in 42 43 I believe so when they started to start getting phased out uh, this was a, uh, a lend-lease vehicle that they sent over to the Russians to help bolster their forces and the Russians Word has it <laughs> that the Russians thought that this was the best tank that they got from the Lend-Lease agreements with Britain and the uh, United States. They, they tended to prefer this tank above all others, I guess because of the reliability of the vehicle. And it was, a, it was tough and it tended to drive well and function well, even though a lot of it had smaller guns. But the Russians seemed to like them for their ruggedness. Of course, there may be a political statement hidden in there too, perhaps. <laughs> but uh, they got on well with theirs. So 
That's the type four. This is the type eleven. And my kid also makes. I think they make the archer too, but but they make the bishop. Although this one is a reboxing. So it says made in Russia, but this is boxed from RPM models, which I believe is out of Poland. So this gets a little, yeah, because it says it's from Warsaw here. And this has a 1996 date on it. So I'm going to show you this so you can see what the, what the moldings look like on these. So the Bishop was the self-propelled gun platform that was on the Valentine chassis. This put the 25-pounder uh, cannon in a boxed structure called the Bishop because it had this enormous like Bishop's hat or pulpit station, as they kind of refer to them. It's a bit dusty. <laughs> All right. Good cobwebs here. So this, you kind of can see you get this cheap yellowed paper design. You can see the suspension system, how that goes together. Like I said, it's it's a bit on the crude side, but they, you can make a pretty decent model out of these. Now this is, is taking it a step further with more work when you look at the interior of this gun platform and everything that goes on in there. Oops. So these parts break down. This uh, instruction sheet's a little busy. It doesn't give you much for uh, painting and decal options. It's pretty much just the one that's on the box here, which I think might have been from the LL Main period, from A Company there. But I have seen other marking options for these vehicles. There is, uh, for example, I believe there's a green one that was used in Sicily that's kind of a known model. I don't know if I've got that in 72nd scale over here. I don't think so. I've got a small collection of 72nd scale stuff right next to me here. No. But I do have one. <laughs> Just for kicks. I think this is a 76 scale Valentine. But when I was younger, my eyes worked better. <laughs> That's a small, small tank model. Anyway, so let's take a look at the parts. So the parts go on these things. And yeah, I get some dust on that. So you can probably see that the attachment points are a little thick. So it's going to be hard cutting these parts out. You can see that the it's not bad. You know, the detail's not that bad. It's just not quite as fine and as delicate as you'd see for moldings from some other companies. But again, it's certainly doable. An idea how the the hull looks. And then it's got trees for the. Uh, get this out of here. Yeah. <laughs> There's your treads. And they're very small. Link by link. A little nightmarish there. And you know, the other decal options, as I mentioned, were limited to the one, to the one variant. But there you go. They look like they're pretty good. I didn't recall any problems with decaling either of these kits, so they went together pretty well. Yeah, the fun part of putting all the parts back in the box. <laughs> it's kind of an art in itself. So that's the bishop. 
So yeah, these are the uh, the Marquette kits, um, which are, like I said, a little more work, a little more filing and sanding going to be needed to be done, but they do come up making some interesting looking models. Maybe a cheaper alternative to some of the newer ones, like the Tamiya one, perhaps. But if you want a little more of a challenge, you know, this is the one, I believe this is the, the model that the, uh, the Tamiya is doing, this variant, this early variant. But if you want to get the later variant like this one, I think you're kind of stuck with this kit. And like I said, it has some flaws, but I do think it came out looking pretty good. <laughs> I really enjoyed building this, even despite you know the extra work involved. But I was having a lot of fun working on this. It took me a while to put it together, and uh, yeah, it was fun to do. To be totally fair, it was a lot of fun to do this, and I like the way it came out, even with this defect there. But I'll I'll work that out with a diorama. It'll look fine. Anyway, that's today's model building workshop. Just looking at some Valentine ta uh, tanks. Uh, from the Marquette line. Okay, we'll see you guys soon. Have a good one and take it, take it slow. Keep on building. And here's the the bishop. <laughs> Found it after the fact, but there it is. <sighs> Sorry, a dusty spot in the basement. But it gives you an idea how huge this <laughs> structure is. Anyway, this is how I looked in Sicily. All right, folks.